Hello and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today we're going to talk about the histopathologic diagnosis of a common intracranial neoplasm. If you like this video, please click the like button at the, bu at the bottom of your screen. This video is meant for medical education purposes only and is not intended to be used for medical advice. If you or a loved one have an, a brain tumor, please talk to your doctor. Today we're going to talk about the histopathologic diagnosis of a brain lesion, and it's important to always start with the history first. So in this case, the history is a patient who is 50 years old, she's a woman, and she has a lesion in the frontal lobe. So let's take a look. The neurosurgeon went in and took a biopsy of this lesion, and this is what we received. This is a low power view um, taken at 2x. And what it shows here is that there is a piece of recognizable brain tissue that uh, looks to be involved by tumor, but it still has uh, retained its general architecture um, and is recognizable as brain tissue. Surrounding this um, fragment of brain tissue is uh, areas of frank tumor. And on low power, it looks like the cells are a little bit uh, monomorphic, and it kind of has an oligodendroglial appearance to it in that the cells are very monomorphic, uh, the nuclei look pretty round, everything looks pretty uniform. Um, if we go on higher power and we look in this area, we can see that there are some regions where the cells have um, perinuclear clearing around the, um, uh, around the nucleus. There's this cleared out areas, and this is a um, artifact of fixation that sometimes you can see these in oligodendrogliomas as well as in other glial tumors. In addition, there are these uh, atypical glial cells here that have these little pink bellies, and these are reminiscent of many gemistocytes. Many meaning M-I-N-E, small looking gemistocytes. So from here, it kind of sort of has an oligo appearance. However, when we look on higher power, we can see that there's a lot more atypia than what we would expect for an oligo. Um, so here we have a neuron that is being surrounded by these infiltrating glial cells. And so this tells us that this is a diffuse uh, process where this neuron was minding its own business and then got um, in enveloped and surrounded by these uh, abnormal glial cells. And there's a lot more atypia here than what we would expect for a normal glia, um, for a usual oligodendroglioma a lot more atypia in that um, typically oligodendrogliomas have a uniform, very round, very monotonous looking nuclei. Whereas here we can see a lot more atypia than what you would typically expect. So um, here's an example of a abnormal glial cell that is um, very enlarged compared to uh, its surrounding neighbors. Here's another neuron that looks like it's being um, surrounded and infiltrated by the uh, abnormal glial cells. And here is a mitotic, uh, a mitotic figure um, that is labeled here. So this is telling us so far that we have a diffuse glioma. The amount of atypia uh, that we see tells me that this is probably an astrocytoma and not an oligo. Um, there are some vascular alterations here, which we can see here. There's a there's a lymphocytic cuffing in which the lymphocytes form a little cuff around the um, vessels. And uh, this does not qualify as vascular proliferation of what you would see in a uh, glioblastoma. So glioblastomas um, are characterized by a diffuse glioma that's an astrocytoma that has vascular proliferation characterized by um, um, 
endothelial cell hyper, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, kind of on top of uh, where the endothelial cells are kind of on top of each other. Here we don't see that. We see lymphocytic cuffing, and that's basically the only vascular alterations we see. So um, taking a closer look here, we can see that there are some mitotic figures here. Uh, this particular um, photograph is pointing out two mitoses as well as an apoptotic body. Um, and so these are labeled here for you. Um, within the majority of the tumor, we don't see many mitoses. Um, and so right now I'm between a grade two and a grade three astrocytoma. Uh, which are basically differentiated based on the uh, mitotic count. Uh, the reality is, is that the grade 2 versus grade 3 astrocytomas are very subjective in their differentiation. Um, and so how much is, is increased? So they're basically delineated by uh, increased mitotic activity, but how much is increased? Are two mitoses increased, or is it three, or is it four? So it's kind of hard to say. Um, so this particular tumor is positive for GFAP, and it's also positive for IDH1. So this is an immunostain that is highlighting the mutant protein of the most common IDH1 mutation. That's the R132H mutation. And so this is a uh, tumor that is a diffuse glioma. It's an astrocytoma based on the amount of atypia, which is not that much, based on the amount of mitotic activity, which is not that much, and based on the IDH mutation status, which is present. Uh, the diagnosis for this tumor is a diffuse astrocytoma IDH mutant WHO grade 2. Okay, so that completes the, uh, the diagnosis for this case. Please join us next time on Adventures in Neuropathology. Thank you.